Hi everyone and welcome to chapter 8, part 1b, blood, tissue fluid and lymph. Now these are three liquids sort of in your body, three types, but they're a little bit different in composition. So before we go there, let's talk about blood first and the components in it. So if you take blood from yourself, people, but you know, if doctors take blood from you and they centrifuge it, centrifuge means spinning, at a very, very high speed, maybe like 1,200 or 12,000 rounds per minute. <clears throat> in speed, your blood will actually separate into different layers according to its density. So this red layer here, which is the most dense because it's at the bottom, uh, will consist of red blood cells and this is 44% of your blood composition. 1% would be platelets and white blood cells and 1% of red blood cells will be next video. But the most, the component that is found in most abundance is what we call the plasma. And the plasma includes water, ions, proteins, nutrients, waste, and gases. Water is water. Ions, you can think of sodium, potassium, um, chloride ions. Those are very common in your blood. Right? Proteins could be antibodies. Antibodies are proteins. Um, it could be enzymes, a lot of things. Um, some hormones as well are also proteins. Nutrients that are absorbed from your diet, so glucose and acids, lipid, waste materials, urea, which eventually forms urine that will be covered in A2, um, and gases that your cell needs, which is oxygen and gases your cells don't want, which is carbon dioxide. All these things form the plasma, which is the major component of blood. Now you realize that plasma here does not include any cells, and that's important to note. Okay, so what about tissue fluid? So that's blood, that's number one. Number two, what is tissue fluid? Well, before we go into how it's formed, let's talk a little bit about its name. Now, it's also called interstitial fluid, and it's because it's in between cells, inter. So in Interstitial fluid or tissue fluid is in between cells and it bathes cells and it acts as a medium for exchange of materials between cells and blood. What do we mean medium for exchange? It means that it is where things are exchanged. For example, your cells will need glucose and oxygen and nutrients, right? But it would want to get rid of urea, of carbon dioxide, of any wastage, waste materials. And that would all pass through the tissue fluid it is a medium for exchange and tissue fluid is actually formed from blood plasma huh surprise so blood okay has a relationship to tissue fluid right and 55 percent of the blood which is plasma would result in the formation of tissue fluid and we will see how in a moment after it forms tissue fluid, tissue fluid is eventually returned to the blood as well. Okay, the reason is we don't want tissue fluid to ever accumulate. Okay, we don't want to form it and we don't want it to just continue forming without uh, getting returned anywhere because that would result in, uh, we'll get fatter, it will be, we will, we will be bloated, we don't want that. It has to be returned to the blood eventually. So let's move through step by step. How is it formed from blood plasma, right? And how is it returned to the blood eventually? And what does it have to do with lymph? Okay, step by step. Let's first talk about formation of tissue fluid from the blood plasma. Now, remember last video, uh, we spoke of how blood flows from the artery to the arterial. Okay, arterial is not mentioned here, but it's arterial, right? To the capillaries, to the venules, and to the veins. We also spoke about how there's differences in blood pressure between the arterial and venous ends, which is the artery end and the vein end. Now, in this kind of structure, right, in, in this kind, in the two ends of the capillary bed, right, blood pressure in the arterioles is higher than blood pressure in the venules, which makes sense because Obviously, the blood pressure decreases with distance from the heart. Arteries are closer to the heart and therefore higher pressure. Veins are further away from the heart and therefore lower pressure. In fact, it's almost zero, right? Okay, so 
since it has high pressure on one end and low pressure on the other, what happens is uh, the blood plasma will flow out into tissue spaces. So that pressure on one side will cause the blood plasma to flow out of the capillaries through the endothelial pores into the tissue, uh, into outside, into the medium of exchange surrounding cell to form tissue fluid. Okay. Remember, capillaries is made out of endothelial cells or squamous epithelial cells, and in between them, there's these gaps, right? So plasma flows out from there to form tissue fluid at the arterial end. But hey, there's, those are very, very small gaps. Uh, it acts some sort of like a filter, so large things will not be able to pass through. Larger plasma proteins, especially, cannot pass through. Cells cannot pass through. Red blood cells, especially. So when we come to the com composition of the tissue fluid, it is similar to the blood plasma composition because it is made from blood plasma. But again, they have endothelial gaps, which are too small for certain things to pass through. So it's similar, but not exactly the same. Tissue fluid contains of the gases, glucose and gases, urea ions, which are basically nutrients, waste, gases, and water and ions, pretty much the same thing, but it has only smaller proteins, for example, antibodies that can pass through, and some hormones. It's overall a lower protein concentration in plasma, which makes sense because well, the larger proteins aren't passing through. Um, the exception to the gaps, okay, the rule that only small things can pass through is white blood cells. This is the only exception to the rule. And that's because they enter the tissue fluid by different mechanism. Some white blood cells are able to do this, especially phagocytes. Phagocytes are cells that undergo white phagocytosis. You can refer to chapter 4 for this. And they can leave the blood vessels even though they are large. Tissue fluid also contains a lower oxygen concentration in plasma. So may I just remind you that, hey, um, the tissue fluid is a medium of exchange, right? This means it has all the different things in it. Um, the, tish, the tissues or the cells require water, oxygen, glucose, amino acids, and the cells will actively or passively transport these substances into the cells themselves, right? They will take up these nutrients, they will take up this oxygen in order to generate, to do what it has to do for metabolism, right? And, and um, when it wants to the cells would want to get rid of carbon dioxide, will be spelled here, waste molecules and whatever they don't want, and they will get rid of it into the tissue fluid, which flows back into the blood vessels or the capillaries here. So bear in mind that hey, oxygen concentration will be lesser because it's always taken up by the cells um, compared to blood plasma, and whereas the the um, tissue fluid would, would probably have um, more carbon dioxide than the tissue fluid that's coming out from the arterial. Okay, let me repeat that again. The tissue fluid near the venule would be probably higher concentration of carbon dioxide compared to the tissue fluid near the arterial end because by this time the tissues uh, or the cells have like all the carbon dioxide inside have diffused out and would want to diffuse in back into the capillaries to get rid of it. So yeah, just remember that tissue fluid is always a medium of exchange and think in that direction. So this is what is um, almost the same. What is different is this, there's no platelets compared to the blood plasma composition. There is no large proteins, as I said, they're too fat, too, pass, I mean, too large to pass through the endothelial gaps. There are no red blood cells. They are also too large to pass through the endothelial gaps. Now again, tissue fluid must always be returned to the blood. We don't want it to accumulate, we don't want it to be cut, we don't want um, we don't want to have too much fluid bathing the cells, right? And how does it return to the blood though? 
Now the blood pressure at the venous end, as we know, is lower than the arterial end. And the blood pressure that is low uh, allows the tissue fluid to return to the blood at the venous end, the end that's near the veins. 90% of blood, uh, sorry, 90% of the tissue fluid is returned to the blood through those endothelial gaps, but that's just 90%. How about the 10%? 10% actually becomes lymph. It goes through the lymphatic vessels and is returned to the blood via the subclavian veins near the heart. So eventually you can see here that tissue fluid is always returned to the blood. 90% is returned to the blood straight away, 10% becomes lymphus, and then it becomes blood. Later on. 